My name is Jared Hunston, I'm the course manager on the game management course at Receive College. Been here for two and a half years now. When people ask me what do you look for, you know, what makes a, a good gamekeeper, I mean, a lot of the things I'm looking for in the students when they come to college is the things that I can actually teach. So the things that I would look to become or to make a good gamekeeper got to have a passion for the countryside. Um, with modern gamekeeping you've got to have a passion for conservation um, that's very very important the way things are changing that's key to our job um, you know we're wildlife managers and conservationists now you've got to be able to get out of bed you've got to be self-disciplined um, you've got to have a really strong work ethic because your head keeper will have that and if you haven't got that you probably won't last Hi, my name's Mike Fellows. I work at Sparsholt College in Hampshire. It's a land-based college. I work in the land and wildlife department. I have two roles here. I look after our gamekeeper and apprentices, and I also will be looking after, from the new start of the new term, uh, our level one land-based students. For those that are thinking of, you know, taking up gamekeeping as a career, um, and you are sort of at, still at school or becoming a school leaver, the key things you will need, and you cannot escape this, is you will need to get your functional skills qualifications, i.e. English and Maths. Apprenticeship route, it's slightly different, but you still need your functional skills, English and Maths, and I think you should still be aiming for GCSE level three sort of standard. If you don't get those at school, you don't slip through the net, you will have to do them here as part of your course. So my advice would be, get those nailed down at school and then it's behind you. As I mentioned, um, there are two routes, the apprenticeship route, which you'll go, you'll go straight into the workplace, or the, um, the college route. It's important that the student or the apprentice make, makes that correct decision which route to go down in conjunction with parents and stuff. For, because I see lots of lads that are 16, 17, and they are chomping at the bit and they are ready to be an apprentice and they're good to go. For others, the college route is far, far better because they're not ready to move 100 miles away from home, live in a caravan, work alone, only get perhaps Sundays off and have to do their own washing, cook for themselves and stuff like that. So for those people, those students, the college route would probably be better and you get the you know lots of pluses with coming to the college you, there's a social aspect you get a couple of years similar sort of qualification and then you can decide whether gamekeeping is for you whereas that's slightly different to the apprenticeship route where you're in at the coal face straight away for students here on the the two-year level three course um, which is really the the course that they should try to get themselves onto. Um, you'll cover a, a huge range of um, activities and both practical and, and theory. Um, on the theory side, there is, uh, you'll be learning, you'll learn deer management, ecology, conservation, shoot day management, aspects of rearing. Um, and on the practical side, you'll also do rearing. You'll, you'll run a shoot day. Uh, we have a little shoot just about 10 minutes away from here that, uh, the owners very kindly let our students go and uh, run a few small days for them, um, which is, you know, really good. You'll go out with our senior. We've got a, a, a deer management specialist, one of our lecturers, and we've got a, um, some forestry commission ground where I think in your second year you'll go out and do some stalks. Um, we've got excellent butchering and lardering facilities where you'll learn how to grolock deer correctly. We've got our own butcher who um, is really, really a, a, an excellent butcher. He, he looks after his own butchery apprentices, but he, he will show you how to actually butcher deer correctly. So, um, and then on the practical side in the workshop, um, we'll, you'll be, you, you know, you could be building pen sections. You might be building bird boxes, tool boxes, um, high seats. We make timber high seats. 
So there's an awful lot that we cover um, in, in your two years and we try and replicate as best as we can in a college environment what you would be doing if you were an apprentice. So it's a really, really good course. A valuable part of the uh, student's development or whether that be at college or an apprenticeship, uh, more so at college, is um, the engagement of the estates that we have, uh, the sporting estates we have in the, this country. It's that side that we can't really replicate uh, within college, but when they get out and they're doing their work placement or they're going off during the summer because that's something else that I sort of push the students to do. You know, that when, when they're not in college, they go off and, and um, find some sort of work experience where they can go and do it either if it's somewhere local where they can do it at weekends, but, you know, like say half term or during the summer when they've got like six weeks off, they go off and work on, a, on an estate. Um, gives them that practical experience. It's also another point of contact as regards, um, you know, in the future, it, it gives them that sort of potential reference. You know, they've worked for somebody, so when they're applying for a job in the future, it means they can potentially go back to them, you know, for a reference. So it's it's all part and parcel of it. And like I say, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a vital part of the, um, the student's development that they get out and they actually you know, do these, do these things on the estate, and try and get a over the two years, try and get a, you know, a wider sort of take on, you know, on the on the profession really. So look at, you know, they might come to college, and they just sort of blinkered, and it's like I just want to work with pheasants, but go and look at, you know, um, what an upland keeper does. Go and look at what a deer stalker does. You know, go, go and look at all the, you know. Try different things, and like I say, it's a point of it's a point of contact in the future for when you, you you're going out and, and looking for a job. So the more people you get get to know and get to work with, potentially the easier it might be in you actually landing yourself a job in the future. Going into the industry as an underkeeper, you still you still in training really. You're still at that stage where you've not you've not got the experience to run your own own sort of beat, so you're still sort of working under the guidance of the head keeper to a fair degree. I mean, you you will have, you know, you'll have times where an underkeeper will work with the head keeper and the other guys, you know, on the team, but then there'll be times where you know it'll be whether the young lad or, or girl is expected to do certain things you know, unsupervised, so it might be that they have their own sort of like trap line, they've got their own snares, so things like that, they go off and check those. Um, they might be asked to do some of the more sort of mundane things, um, jobs that need to be done, but the jobs that, you know, the head keeper and the other lads, um, they're off busy doing other things, so an underkeeper, you would be expected to do, to do some of the more sort of menial, sort of jobs but every head keeper in in the country has had to do those jobs at, at some stage of the career you know when they started they will have been exactly the same they'd have been expected to make sure the vehicles are clean on a shoot day make sure that the, you know the the, the the gum rooms tidied um, all these all these types of things whatever it is they might not be the best jobs in the world but they're the jobs that need to be done and obviously you know the head keeper will delegate as to who does what and these type of jobs will be sort of passed on to the to the underkeeper because like I say you're still in that sort of transition where you're not you're not at a stage where you can just go off and like I say look after your own beat but you, you know you're developing you'll be given tasks um, according to you know what you're capable of of actually doing so for any young person Something that's looking to go into gamekeeping as a as a profession, um, you know, it's a fan fantastic industry. You know, you'll see a lot of things that, and do a lot of things that you would never do in any other, other kind of job. So it is, it is a, a fantastic sort of job to go into. Um, it's demanding, definitely. You know, it's it's more of a way of life than a job. So it's something that you've got to be really committed to. Um, and the more 
knowledge you can sort of gain, um, whether it be before you, you come to college or over the two years that you're, you're at college. The more you can find out about the industry, about what's, what's involved in actually being a gamekeeper on a day-to-day -day basis, um, these, these are the things that are invaluable. Um, you need to go into this with your sort of eyes wide open, really. Um, it's not just what you see at the game fairs, there's a lot more to it. It's really rewarding. You know, I did the job for over 25 years. Um, it's a fantastic, you know, part of my life. So it is something that, you know, I do sort of advocate um, anybody that's interested, go for it, but make sure that you find out as much as you can. And especially if, if you do decide uh, when you leave school that this is what, what you want to go into and you go onto a course or you go onto an apprenticeship, that two years that you're involved in that, then you, you gain as much and knowledge and information as you can because that's what's gonna help you get a job in the future. The more, the more you can do over the two years, the more effort you put in over that two years, it should make life a little bit easier for you actually going out and getting yourself a job. The open day at Receive is normally around um, May time. So that's another way of somebody that's potentially looking at doing this as a career in the future. Um, you can come to college, um, have a chat with Obviously, if you come to receive, you can have a chat with me about the course and about different aspects of the job. But all the colleges that are, are running the same course that we run at uh, receive, I'll have open days. So wherever you, you live in the country, if there's an agricultural college near you that's running a gamekeeping course, then my advice will be to go to one of their open days, have a chat with the lecturers there. They'll give you all the relevant information tell you a bit about the course, also tell you a bit about the industry you're looking to go into. Um, so it's a really good way of seeing whether this is something that might be something that you might want to do in the future. Joining the National Gamekeepers organisation is a choice for all shooters and gamekeepers. Help promote, protect gamekeeping, conservation and shooting as we know it today. Get on the front foot. Support an organisation that will defend what you love and we do. NGO membership comes with £10 million of third party liability, a dedicated firearms licensing team, legal support, as well as many, many other members' benefits. Be part of Britain's biggest conservation movement.